The market for dim sum bonds, renminbi credit raised outside China, is suffering its longest barren patch since inception, going four weeks without a single deal being completed. Joining me to discuss this is Ti Chun Hong from Standard Chartered. Thanks for joining us this morning. morning. Um, why is it that yields are up, there hasn't been a deal, uh, there seems to be no appetite for dim sum at the moment, what's going on? Uh, the recent inactivity in the primary market, I think there are two factors. One is the uh, tapering of QE or speculation of the tapering QE, uh, which is affecting the US dollar market as well. Uh, the new issue market for both dollars and other Asian currencies by and large has been closed since uh, late May. But more importantly also for dim sum, it is affected by the uh, interbank liquidity issues onshore in China uh, and with the connectivity between onshore and offshore uh, is, uh, effects is uh, uh, being felt in Hong Kong just as well. The other dynamic that uh, has been playing out in the last sort of month or so is is a sort of reduction in expectations for renminbi appreciation. Uh, I mean, Standard Chartered, I think you have a 0.25% expectation for the rest of the year. Um, it, it used to be the case that dim sum was seen as simply somewhere to park your renminbi and then you'd have the yield and you'd have the appreciation. Is that no longer the case? I, I think that is not the major factor uh, over the last 18 months, but uh, I think uh, what it is is about the interest rate differential potentially for example if US dollar rates uh, do go up sharply then perhaps people will look at the rate differential between RMB and uh, US dollars I say but if you say if you're 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 receiving renminbi for trade where where else could you put it other than the dim sum market we see interbank for example deposit rates has gone up quite sharply some of the banks are offering for example 3.5% right uh, uh, with regards to your team sum issues, for example, even in June and, and then recently in July, the issuing volume of CDs, uh, these are typically one year, uh, some of them are six months, uh, the volume actually have not decreased significantly. So say. Uh, the, the, the dim sum market has seen sell-offs before, um, especially during the periods where the renminbi has weakened. Yeah. Do you expect the market to, to bounce back quickly now that the liquidity situation is eased somewhat in China? Almost at the height of the liquidity squeeze in CNH onshore, uh, we launched the, uh, one of the largest team sum bonds this year, which is the Ministry of Finance. You see. I think the total amount is 13 billion. Uh, from three years all the way to 30 years, the same. Apart from the bread and butter institutional investors, you, know, you do have uh, central banks, for example, who are looking at it. Uh, so I do, I do think the globalization of RMB it will continue. I mean, the other longer term question about the offshore market is what happens when the onshore market, actual bonds you know, issued in China, become more or accessible to international investors? Do you see that? Uh, sort of leaching some liquidity away from the market here? We have actually see the Chinese are more willing to increase the cross-border uh, activities, increasing the uh, quota for RQ fee, for example. And we have also seen them uh, recently uh, announcing plans for uh, Chinese credits, either through direct lending or guarantees. Uh, for the offshore subsidiaries. So I think this thing will be coming more two-way, whether it's in or out, as I say. And the result of that is, uh, has already manifest itself in, for example, the last uh, Ministry of Finance uh, team some transaction, which is the spread between onshore and offshore are getting narrower. So I do think actually opening up the onshore market to outside is a good thing. Thank you very much for joining us. And you can read plenty more on this at ft.com forward slash markets.